To understand Kelvin circulation theorem, we're gonna we're gonna consider it in the general case for some general vector Q. Um, Q could be, for example, um, vorticity or magnetic field in MHD. Um, Q is a vector where the time derivative of Q is given by the curl of U cross omega. So this is um, this could be we've seen this for vorticity um, for an ideal barotropic fluid. Um, and uh, we'll also see that this is also the, the magnetic field um, in, uh, in ideal MHD. Um, both of those vector fields evolve according to this um, uh, d by dt of vector field is curl of u cross vector field. And Kelvin circulation theorem says that if the um, if the vector field evolves according to uh, del cross u cross q, then the time derivative of the integral of the flux of q through surfaces, this is the flux of uh, q across surfaces, uh, the the time derivative of the flux of q is unchanged. So the, the flux of Q across surfaces in the fluid is a constant. This ends up being a very, very powerful idea for considering the evolution of, of vorticity and, um, and other vector quantities in ideal fluids. Let's, um, let's, let's start by, by drawing um, our, our simple surfaces that we were considering before. So let's consider um, two two surfaces in my fluid separated by some time. So we'll call this, um, we'll call this uh, S1 and S2. And we're gonna, we're gonna think in terms of differential surfaces right now, just very, very small surfaces, DS2. Um, both of my surfaces, um, we're, gonna, we're gonna treat these as proper, proper vector surfaces. We're gonna, we're gonna align their, um, we're gonna have their vector normals point this way for now, and um, these two surfaces are connected in time by the flow of our ideal fluid. So this, um, in some time t or delta t, um, our, our, our surface one sweeps out a cylinder to surface two, and the, the length of this cylinder, this is um, u times, um, times dt. Um, because we've we've gone some distance length given by by the velocity of our flow. I, I need to consider um, one more differential in our in our system here. Um, I'm going to consider um, I'm going to consider on my on my surface here. Uh, I'm going to consider the um, the little uh, the length dl, um, and we're going to need that when doing. Uh, uh, an integral around our surfaces. So I've got dl pointing in this direction. I've got um, I've got my my length that we've gone down uh, u dt, um, and now we're we're ready to, to consider some things. So we start with um, we start with a property of surfaces, which is that the since this is a closed surface. We know that all of the um, we know that the vector area of these three surfaces is zero since it's a closed surface. So what that means is that our um, our our ds two uh, minus uh, ds one. Um, so that's our that's our two end caps and our our vector area of our of our side of our cylinder here. Uh, this is actually um, our differential uh, l. Um, crossed with our um, with our length u dt and then integrated all around our 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 our, um, our surface. So this is um, and I've got my I've written this backwards, so I'm going to put a minus sign in front of that. So this is the the contour integral of u dt crossed with our differential length dl. Um, and these, since it's a closed surface, they, they equal to zero. Um, 
which is just a property of, of vector surfaces. All right, if we rearrange this in a clever way, we're gonna have, we're gonna keep our ds2 minus our ds1, um, and we're gonna take this second term, we're gonna move it to the right-hand side, and we're gonna recognize that the dt can come out of the integral and actually be divided across, because the integral is over space, but this dt is over time. So this is equal to um, the, the contour integral around our, the perimeter of our surface of u uh, cross dl. Um, and, and this, of course, if we take some limit of dt goes to zero, um, this looks an awful lot like d by dt of our surface, um, d of our surface, uh, dt is equal to our closed contour integral um, u cross dl. Okay, so that's that's some um, that's some that's some vector math of, of surfaces. Let's let's come back now to our um, to our Kelvin our Kelvin theorem here, and let's um, with this this building block in place. Let's. Let's consider this and consider how to, to prove this. So let's start with our, with our theorem that we're trying to show. Okay, so we have um, d by dt of our, um, of our flux of the vector q dot ds equals zero. And if we propagate this derivative through, this is a time derivative, and these are spatial variables. We get the sum d by dt of q dotted with ds um, plus, and uh, these are these are under integrals, um, plus the integral of uh, of q dotted with ds dt all equals zero. All right, let's, um, let's, let's take our identity we just got. So we, we just from, from vector considerations, we just, got, um, we just got the form of this integral right here. So we can actually, we can, we can plug this in. So let's, let's start writing this out. So, so this, so let's consider this term in isolation. This term looks like this. It's the um, integral Q of uh, dotted with ds dt. Um, this is uh, Q dotted with uh, ds uh, dt. And this is the um, integral, the surface integral of the contour integral of q dotted with u cross dl. This was our, um, our cylindrical surface area bit. And we can, we can use a, a vector identity to rearrange this interior. This is the integral, contour integral of um, q cross u dotted with dl. All right. We've now written this in a way where we can use, um, we can use Stokes' theorem. Um, we're, we'll also note the, um, the, the contour integral and the surface integral, they, they can be combined into just being, um, into just being one, as we'll see in a moment. So we're, so with Stokes' theorem, which relates uh, surface integrals and and contour integrals, um, we can we can rewrite this now. I'm going to rewrite our original expression. So our we're going to take our q dot uh, ds uh, dt. And using Stokes' theorem, we can rewrite this as the 
as the contour integral of q cross u dot dl, right? So that's that's what we have already by by vector manipulation. And then Stokes' theorem comes in to um, replace our contour integral with a surface integral. So this is, excuse me, we've got our, our surface integral. And then Stokes' theorem changes that contour integral to a surface integral of, um, of the curl of q cross u dot ds. And our, um, we've got effectively a, a double surface integral, but only one differential. And so that just magically turns into a, a single surface integral of this thing. So this is an integral over the surface of the quantity del cross uh, q cross u dotted to ds from Stokes' theorem. And then we can swap the order of these two um, and their sign changes. So this is the integral of uh, the curl of u cross q now with a minus sign out in front since we've changed the order of q and u using properties of cross products. All right, so let's, th this was this one term. This was um, q ds dt, which was part of two terms of our q evolution equation, q ds dt, with our other term here, d by dt of q ds. So let's, Let's bring all of this down together now and obtain our proof of the Kelvin circulation theorem. So here's our, um, here's our integral of q dot ds dt. All right, so our, um, our, our thing we wanted to, to show q, the integral of d by dt of um, uh, q dot ds, uh, this is equal to the integral of d by dt of q dot ds plus q uh, dot uh, d by dt of s. We're bringing it all under the integral sign now. And that this is equal to zero. Uh, using our our vector identity we just um, we just figured out from our cylinders. Um, this is uh, d by dt of q, and then uh, this part here. This is minus del cross u cross cross q, and then all of this dots with the same surface ds. And our, our, our question is, is this equal to zero? That's the, that's the Kelvin circulation theorem. Well, we, we stated at the start, but have not used in the proof, that the time evolution of our vector q is del cross u cross q. And so if, if our time evolution um, d by dt of q vector is del cross u cross q, then the integral of d by dt q minus del cross u cross q, that must be zero on any surface because the, the first term here is zero by the evolution equation. So we have now proven Kelvin circulation theorem, which states powerfully that the change in time of the flux through a surface of our vector Q is zero when Q is given 
um, by a, a curl of u cross omega evolution equation. Important examples of this are the vorticity equation. d by dt of the vorticity is del cross u cross omega. This is our vorticity evolution equation for an ideal barotropic fluid. Um, and another one is the, the MHD induction equation uh, in, a, in a magneto hydrodynamic approximation, the magnetic field B for an ideal fluid evolves according to del cross U cross B. So there's some, there's some similarities to how, um, how an, a magnetic field and a vortex line evolve in an ideal fluid. There, there's some differences too, um, but there are, there are some similarities and intuition for one can give us um, clues and intuition into the evolution of the other.